Greetings beautiful souls. I am sharing how you can take an ordinary grocery brown paper bag or department store paper bag and turn it into a gift bag. It doesn't have to be for the holidays. It could be for a birthday or just to give a gift to, to, to someone. And um, what I've done is I went to Google and I typed in vintage greeting cards and um, pulled up, I pulled up a lot of greeting cards um, that you can print out. And so that's what I did. And then I layered um, it with uh, scrapbooking paper in the background, um, which you can also print out for free on online. Um, these tags were also free. It comes from a uh, blog and I've linked it in the description box below. Um, these, this, this bow here I got in a roll for about a dollar twenty nine or so. So it doesn't have to be expensive to create a bag and it's, you know, since you're making it yourself, it's more heartfelt. Um, you know, you personalize it. And it does not have to be expensive. Sometimes the gift bags that are already made um, can be expensive. Um, you could also buy inexpensive ones and also do the same thing that I did here to enhance it a little bit more. I use this twine. Or actually, this is like, yeah, t t twine, burlap, you know, type of um, string that you, you, you can buy at your local um, discount store or 99 cent store. So everything here is affordable. The flowers were handmade. I have a tutorial in how I did these, which I've linked in the description box below. So this is one of the bags. Here's another one I did, and I bought this um, glitter tape from my local discount store or 99 cent store. It's, it's, it's sort of like duct tape, but not quite like duct tape. Same thing, I went on Google and downloaded the images. This image here, I actually... Um, edited it because um, it was too narrow so I edited it I edit it to expand it a bit more so I took parts of the images and just um, moved it around and made it wider to fit the bag this one here is a little bit more shabby chic and um, I also want to mention that these bags were actually longer. Um, so I trimmed it. I took off the handles. These, these are the original handles th that it came with. And this, the, this bag comes from Harbor Freight. And the handles were kind of too short to even put your fingers in it. So um, I removed the handles, shortened the bag to my liking. And then I just um, repositioned the handle so that there's room to put your hand in. Again, these are um, handmade flowers that I have a tutorial on. And these are flowers I have in my stash. These flowers I get from my local 99 cent store they have like a party section um, party supply section or a little section for like um, party favors and you know you create your own souvenirs so I was um, grateful enough that they have that and I was able to get these flowers um, when I cut off the top of the bag um, whatever was left over, I cut them into strips like this. I, I crinkled it up 
and I um, inserted it in here as a filler. So I didn't even have to buy tissue paper. And it's still just as pretty. This bag here was a regular um, bag that you get at your local um, corner bodega or store. And um, these don't come with handles. So I just glued in some of that twine burlap string to create some handles. And again, free images. The, this also I got free by Googling vintage images. This one is like one of my favorites because it has, <clears throat> excuse me, it has shabby chic colors. So pretty. So, so pretty. This one is super duper shabby chic. <laughs> I love shabby chic. I made this um, handmade flower using a doily and I sewed around a strip of lace and this one too and then I glued in this vintage button I glued on I layered some lace here isn't that adorable adorable um, this pap these papers are actually from a paper pad, from a 6x6 six six paper pad that I have. And what I did was I scanned it in and I um, pieced them together to make a 8.5 by 11 sheet. There are some paper pads that I absolutely love that I can't get anymore. They don't, they discontinued them. Um, so when I can get some of the paper pads that I absolutely love, which are sh shabby chic, I scan in some of the pages that are my favorites, and then I um, piece them together to make a large 8.5 by 11 sheet so that I will always have it. I'm not so much into, oh, when, when a new paper pack comes out, I have to get it, or I absolutely love the old ones still, and I will use them. Um, because I absolutely adore them. So I will continue to use them. I forgot to show you that all of the uh, paper bags that I showed you also has um, just the part that I um, that's under layered. They also have them in the back so that it looks nice and clean and finished. This is another one of my favorite images because it looks shabby. Um, there's roses on the tree. I personally really don't celebrate Christmas, um, but my family does. And my friends do. So I honor them and respect um, what they do. And, um, you know, they're kind enough. To give me gifts so I returned the favor I made that flower too so pretty this is such a beautiful image these I got free also on online all the images that I showed you I got them free and then these are some of the images that I told you that I um, scanned from paper pads and I just piece them together uh, to make an eight and a half by 11 sheet. That concludes my, um, the segment of altering brown paper bags that you get free when you purchase um, from a grocery store or a department store. And have fun. Just have fun doing it. And like I said, it doesn't have to be for the holidays. It could be just a thank you. Um, 
you know, a gift that you want to give to someone and you can personalize the, the, the brown paper bags, especially if you know the person and you know what they like, you can absolutely personalize them to, to their liking uh, for their birthday or um, for, any, for any reason, really. It, it could be any reason. This here is one of three altered cigar boxes. Um, this is another way that you don't have to spend a lot of money to gift someone, you know, something that you made, something really special that you made. So um, this is an image from a paper pad. I don't have the paper pad. I just had one sheet, and this was one of the images that was in the sheet, and I've copied it. This is the copy of it um, since I only have one sheet. Um, and it still turned out beautiful, the copy. These are clay uh, pieces or a clay piece that I had created using a mold. Um, and I have linked in the description box below about molds, ready-made molds and handmade molds and the different kinds of clays. Um, so you can take a look at that if, if you haven't already. I made this charm. I've backed it with this beautiful lace and then I glued in some of these gold beads. These are my handmade flowers as well. Look how tiny that those are. Very tiny. Those are rosebuds and that's a rose. Here I used a uh, metal filigree and a handle and I also made these beads and that's just the sides and I distressed a little, little bit with gold um, ink here and I um, rubbed it with a little bit of gold ink on here because it was a little too dark for my taste and it in my opinion it really didn't go well with the paper so this is the um, this is a mirror and I backed it up with this lace and layered it with this um, gimp rose trim and this is a an angel that I have a mold for. And I added this um, ribbon. Otherwise, this will go all the way back. And I didn't want to, um, I didn't want that to happen because it'll keep distressing the hinge and it'll eventually get loose. This is box number two. Again, this is a clay piece that I made using a mold. These, this was an earring that I just snipped off the, um, the earring post and glued it on with some goop. And I made this charm. This is the same concept as the first box you saw. And I made these charms. And I pretty much did the same thing that I did to the other um, box. But I did, I put this instead. Well, I added this to this one. These are also clay, uh, clay pieces that I um, molded into the mold. So pretty. It's another clay piece 
and I just um, dressed it up. And that's the inside. I lined this with um, clear contact paper so they can clean it. I did that to all of them and I also lined the bottom with paper and the clear contact paper so it doesn't get soiled in case something spills. This is box number three and gotta love that Marie Antoinette. I love her story. Um, there's a debate on the fact that they're saying that she didn't say let them eat cake and there there's you know the debate is she didn't say it she said it she didn't say it so nobody really knows what the truth is either way I think she was an amazing lady so this is also a clay piece and clay piece and I altered that as well I made these um, stick pins <clears throat> she was known for her fashion and her out, outrageous um, hairdos and um, so I thought it would be appropriate to put the mask here and all the jewels I added um, this piece here I just bended it over I think that gave it more of an elegant look. Again, some more charms. This one, I couldn't put a handle on it because um, this wood uh, lid was a little too narrow. I love, before I show you the inside, I have to say that I love the way I did this one. It kind of looks like a little miniature scene. It is so pretty. Well, this is the bottom. I also lined that with the contact paper. Look how pretty this one turned out. Look at that. So pretty. I used another uh, mask here. And, um,. I used to be a fashion designer, so my favorite line to design was couture. So I made this couture. And these were clay pieces as well. And I lined um, this with the gimp trim here and on the top. I'm covering the mirror because of the glare and I haven't combed my hair and I don't want to be seen. My hair is very messy. This concludes this segment of altered brown paper bags and cigar boxes. Let's be fair, share, be filled with love and love one another.